Bible is the mark of the beast. Now today, I'm going to show you one of the worst things that was ever perpetuated upon humanity. The Bible is an idol, and it's the mark of the beast. But the worst thing they ever said was when they named Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John New Testament. That told a lie, and that has destroyed 2 billion, 300 million people. They think those are the words of Jesus to them. Jesus came only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And most of the words he spoke was in parables, and it was prophecy. Most all, that's why they killed him, because he said he was the Christ, and they thought of the Christ as being the king. He wasn't king until no, he yeah. went to the cross. He was anointed to become the king. Yes, he was anointed as the Christ. He come to be the king, but he wasn't king until he died on the cross. Now, I want you to watch the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. If you don't see this, because they called Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John the New Testament. It wasn't even a testament. It was uh, the Old Covenant. Jesus was fulfilling the law. Now, pay close attention to what we're going to tell you. Matthew 7, 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. All right, I'm judging you. Can you read that? Yes. <laughs> All right. Now, why could they judge in Israel? Why couldn't they judge in Israel? Yeah, why would he say, judge not? Because they were all under the law, and they were judged by the law. They was all the same. Mm -hmm. They was the same seed. It'd be like telling your family, I'm better than you are. You're all the same seed, you see. You don't judge under the old covenant because there's all going up to the temple to sacrifice the sheep. And so you did not judge one another because it's like in a beehive. All the bees are the same. Well, they was one. They all had the same law. And they, they were the judged same. by the law. Yeah, there's one. They were judged by the law. Yes, they were judged by the law. So they were all under the law. So Jesus would say, judge not, lest you shall be judged. All right, now. Let's get into the New Testament. The New Covenant. The New, yeah, I'm sorry, the New <laughs> Covenant. The Testament started on Mount Calvary. All right, now what does that say? 1 Corinthians 6, 2. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Now, does that sound different than that one? Completely different. Completely different covenant. Completely different. All right, see, so we said, we shall judge angels. Yeah. Right. Can you not judge the smallest of matters? Right. So now we can judge. Why can we judge now? Because we have the Holy Ghost in us. The Holy Ghost in us. The judge is in us. Did Israel have the Holy Ghost? No. A few of the prophets had the Holy Ghost would come upon them, but they didn't. They weren't filled with the Spirit. Right. The seed hadn't come So yet. now you can judge because God is in you. And you don't, if you ain't got no judgments, you'll be out talking with sinners. You talk with sinners, you'll get sick. It's not really you doing the judging, not in the flesh. It's Christ in you. Yes. He'll bear witness of you if something is of God or not. So it's the Spirit of Christ in you that is judging. If you can't judge a devil from a saint, you're in serious yeah, trouble. or a saint from a sinner. So that's what's wrong with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now here's something that people really don't like me to say. But I want you to pay attention to what um, the principle is in this one. Matthew twenty three twenty three, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Now, what's Jesus saying about tithing? That was under the law. He said you should have done that. Yeah. That's what he said right here. Mm -hmm. Jesus said you should have tithed. Yeah. All right, does it ever mention anything? And I've studied it for over 50 years. Does it ever say anything in the writings of the apostles or anybody that they tithe? No. Why not? Because they weren't under the old covenant, the law. That was for the Levites. The Levites. And what the Levites didn't have? They didn't have an inheritance amongst Israel. So they would give them tithe. Right. So Jesus was preaching to... People under the law, under, under the, the law. old covenant. He said you should give money to Levi because they don't have no inheritance. They're the they ones get. that minister at the temple. You know? Yes. So he said pay tithes them. Now, do we have a Levi tribe today? No. 
No. So you don't pay tithe. Why does all the preachers make you pay tithe? Because you make them rich. The fat yes. cats get richer. And it says it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They say that's New Testament, and that's a lie. That's the biggest lie ever perpetuated upon mankind, and it has destroyed more people's lives than anything. When, when Queen James put that in there, that uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was New Testament, that destroyed uh, 2 billion, 300 million people. It put them under the old covenant, which puts them under the curse of the law, where you cannot be saved. You cannot keep that law. You have to have Christ in you. He keeps the law in you. All right. Now, this uh, this person here. All right, read that. Huh? Second Corinthians nine seven. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, did Paul say pay tithes? No. What did he say? He said, give according to your heart. Now, why do we give according to our heart? By the Holy Spirit. Because we're not under the law. That's right. If the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, then they're a law unto themselves. It's Christ in you that's the law in you. He tells you what to do and what not to do. And you give from your heart or you don't give from your heart. So people is paying 10%? They're paying under the law and they're paying to the devil. And they're cursed. That's right. The boogeyman got them. The boogeyman got you. Yep. So stay with the boogeyman if you want to. If you want to be free, pay attention to us and get out of them prisons with stained glass windows and quit saying that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is New Testament. It's not even a testament in the first place. It's a covenant. And it's the old covenant. And Jesus was filling, fulfilling the old covenant. So he says, now in the new covenant, you give as you purpose in your heart. If, okay. you, if you stay under the old covenant, the words in red, then you're, the boogeyman's going to take you to hell. That's yes. where he takes people under the old covenant. All right. Now, there was a young man one time. Uh, he was a righteous man under the law, kept the law and everything. And he come to Jesus, and he was saying, Lord, what must I do to be saved? And uh, Jesus was telling him the commandments, and this is one of the commandments. Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now that's under the law. Why? Why can you love your neighbor as yourself under the law? Because they were all under the same law, they were the same seed, they were Abraham's seed, and they were all required to live the same way under the law. What happened when Moses was down there and, and someone was striving with an Egyptian? Oh, well, he... Uh, fought against him and he killed that guy. He killed the Egyptian. Right. But how about when he seen him striving amongst themselves? Oh, then uh, God killed them. No, he said, you are brethren. Oh, that's you right. You don't strive amongst each other. That's right. You're brethren. That's but right. now he would kill the Egyptian. Right. Because they wasn't part of Israel. That's right. So you see, he said, keep the law and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, can you love your neighbor as yourself today? No. No. All right. You're amongst sinners. They You're amongst have... You're among sinners. You'll get killed if you love... You're loving sinners. You're loving the devil. You're loving the world. And Satan destroys you. He makes a doormat out of God's children and makes them serve his children. If you love John Hagee, you're on your way to hell. Yeah, you love the devil. You love the devil. Second Corinthians 6.14 Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. <laughs> Does that sound like loving your neighbors yourself? I have this, all this love doctrine. They're telling you Satan... It's changing it now. He's starting to uh, make a new doctrine where everything is love. Just love everybody, and that'll solve all your problems. Does that sound like he's supposed to love everybody? No. What does it say? Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? So what will Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John do to you? It makes you fellowship with unrighteousness. It puts you in darkness. You fellowship sinners. It puts you under the devil. That's really what it does. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John will put you on the road to hell. And a boogeyman will get you, and he'll take you to hell. Because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is old covenant. You get out of the old covenant paying tithes, loving your neighbors yourself, and all these uh, different things. you be under the law, and no man could keep the law. So pay attention to what we're telling you. Get out from under Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's Old Covenant.